Hello and happy holidays to all of you Stampscapes channel viewers. We're going to do a scene, uh, a quick scene, using the same imagery that I've used on the past three straight videos, I think, using the covered bridge. And these are all spray sealed and nice and shiny and deep and saturated and whatnot but large scenes and, you know, uh, took a lot of media on there, a lot of mixed media, which is always fun to do because you can manipulate your colors and whatever type of color scheme you want. Textural, different types of, uh, you know, t patterns and whatnot. But what we're going to do on this one is we're going to start off with the printable starry sticker paper. Link below in the description section if you don't know what this is. But this is a printable vinyl, with printable being the key word. As far as my usage here goes, okay, we're going to be doing some different techniques on here that are really fun to do. But it has to be the printable type. Okay, now you can do other types of um, scenes on vinyls and cardstocks, holographic cardstocks, but it's not going to be the same technique as here because this printable surface, which gives it this kind of tacky kind of quality to it with that emulsion coating makes it open to accepting different types of media that you can't get on or that you can't do on things like uh, just regular uh, holographic vinyls and foils that being said let's get to it okay so the combination that i found to really be fantastic is the brilliance water-based pigment ink okay now i've done a lot of videos for this if you're curious about that you can check um the metallic playlist on the stampscapes channel but this type of water-based ink really sticks to this very well hello linda good to see you all right um okay let's go for roughly a similar composition to what i have done thus far in the full-size pieces. Hello, Sam Hawkins. Good to see you both. Hope you both had a really nice uh, Christmas and are having a nice holiday season. Same goes for anyone else that joins in or is watching on replay. I thought I would go for something Oh, you know, well, starry, because this is a starry uh, sticker paper. Or not, yeah, well, sticker paper here. Printable sticker paper. Hello, Dr. Early. Good to see you. Happy holidays to you. All right. So I'm just giving myself a little bit of a... Oh. A little... <laughs> rough kind of indication of where this image is going to go here. Okay, so this is roughly, it's uh, it's roughly a half page piece. Uh, slimline format here. And I'm marking off where this image is going to go, but I wanna go beyond that because it's going to be more of a kind of a cloudy texture in the background, but I wanna have um, decent uh, coverage down below. So. The, I'm, I'm working on this paper here and it has this really super dynamic surface in the starry patterning on here, holographic patterning at that, but I'm not really using it uh, for an end result to be dominated by this. And as a matter of fact, it's just going to be more of a kind of a peekaboo um, application or usage, I should say of this paper here all right so let's see what we can do here you don't need to apply this does not get applied smoothly on here okay it never does because this water-based pigment ink medium here hello okay um it just goes on here and it dries i not instantly it's not like a like a stays on white pigment ink on matte paper or something like that, but it is pretty well set soon after. It's close to, you know, using a stays on ink on something else. So just be mindful of that. And 
again, don't be concerned about smooth applications. It, it never is for me. And in this type of application, it doesn't matter either. So um, good for us, good for the overall look. And uh, yeah, it's just, uh, just something to consider for everyone because I know how people uh, feel the first time they do something, a lot of times, they just remember the end result of what they're kind of moving towards sometimes. And they don't remember the blotchy kind of, you know, applications that were, you know, present when I was doing that stage of the, uh, of the card there. So I wouldn't say the blotchier the better, but you can get some nice variations in, I guess, opacity and brightness within your imagery after you stamp it matte on the top, which isn't bad because it looks like a kind of a, a change in lighting and pattern within the, uh, the scene. All right, so let's go on here. I just kind of, what I do is I just go for a kind of a, a general coating and then I'll hit it a little bit more in certain areas, but I mean, it really doesn't matter how you do it. All right. If you know where your imagery is going to go, you know, you can kind of hit those areas a little bit, uh, you know, more whatever, targeted and selectively. Hello, Debbie. Again, hope you're all having a great holiday season. If you celebrate Christmas, hope you had a great Christmas day. If you're in uh, some of that crazy weather, I hope all's well with you. I take it none of us are traveling and have to fly domestically here or wherever. That looks like a real nightmare for people. All right, so adding this in. Okay. And again, it's supposed to represent um, kind of a cloudy backdrop, but it's also going to be the platform where, for which we're, you know, positioning all of our media. Um, imagery on top of. Um, I'm going to be utilizing this base coat for my colored pencil work. Um, okay, so that being said, if I had other colors of brilliance too, like a yellow and an orange, I think it would be, it would give me a little bit of a head start up here. I wish I had it, but I don't. Um, I'll, let me see with the brilliance things. I, I think all I have is black and white. Or do I, do I have the gold and silver? Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 I forgot. Platinum Planet, Starlight Silver, and uh, um, that gold one. Love those colors. I, I should, I, I should get those other colors, but I know that they're discontinuing a bunch of stuff and I don't want to start doing demonstrations utilizing um, media that's kind of on the way out, you know. All right. The more opacity, the thicker the um, application, the more opaque it becomes. Okay. So, I mean, it, it's not bad to have some of those reflections showing through that white and through the imagery. You know, it just kind of gives it a little bit of a sparkle to the, uh, you know, to the overall uh, whatever landscape, okay. I don't want it too apparent though, um, but it's not bad to have it in there. Just, I don't know. Imagine you're putting a little bit of a glitter or something like that onto a, you know, certain areas of a scene. Just, you know, just kind of make it shimmer. But I want it, I want it muted so that the sky area, you know, really stands out more in terms of that type of patterning in there. There might be a faster way of doing this, I'm not sure. Larger cotton ball. By the way, this is a 100% cotton, cotton ball, okay. I find that the 100% cotton um, accepts moisture, absorbs it more 
in the cotton ball itself, and therefore it has more to transfer on the surface during your applications here. Um, the synthetic cotton balls, and I mention this all the time, but I never who. This could be someone's first time watching the, you know, this video or utilizing this media with um, this type of paper, but um, the synthetic cotton balls kind of uh, wick moisture, so they don't accept a lot of moisture, so it would just take a lot longer to do this part of the process. <coughs> Woo! Excuse me. All right. All right, here we go. I think that should be sufficient. You want to get most of this kind of laid out like this before you lay down your imagery. We'll be applying more of it on the top of our imagery, but um, the majority of it is something that you want to have laid down because it's like, if you stamp your imagery over the top of it and you think, oh my gosh, I should have had this area more opaque or something like that. If you applied it on top of the imagery, you're going to be kind of muting the definition of the black impressions that you stamp out over the top of this. Okay. But again, you can see, see, you can see my whole patterning on here. I mean, it's, you know, it's real blobby. You can, you know, it looks like a cotton ball has applied all that, right? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do here, just to get my bearings. All right, this is going to be right here, and then I'm going to have, um, I'm gonna be using the smaller trees on this one. Um, the tree trunk, tree trunk trio. Um, all right, let's go like this over here. Okay, so I wanna apply some ink right in here, where this tree is going to go. Now, if I want to make my life a lot easier, I'll just use this larger tree trunk. Um, but I do want this, I want this to be somewhat reflective of this composition right here, at least the top portion. So I, want, I think I do want to use my smaller tree trunk trio stamp in here somewhere, so. I don't, I think I just want to get this main trunk right here blocked out. I don't think I need to do the ones on the side because we already have this laid out down here. So I'll just go like this. And that's my <laughs> block out for it's mainly this larger trunk there, so I'll have to, uh, you know, get that uh, position there. And then, let's see, we'll go with this right here, I think. I may need to move this over a little bit and come over here like this. I'm just, I'm just looking at this as a reference. So this is roughly the same. The width is different. Okay, I cut it off on the sides here a little bit more. But let's go. Let's go about right here. So let's go right here with this one. I don't need to go down here too much, but I don't know. I'm just thinking maybe that tree would be a little bit more opaque or something like that. And let's go over here for whatever additional tree. And then I'll fill in here a little bit with just a real thin, very translucent layer of ink to represent those clouds. And then so I'll have a little bit of a, wherever, it, you know, another trunk goes. I'll have a little bit of this pigment ink down here that I can apply uh, my colored pencils to and, you know, coloring. All right, so 
uh, where did the starry, you know, pattern go? <laughs> you can't really see too much of it, I know. But it is a very dynamic surface, and that is going to be fairly attention-getting in the end result, having that moving, kind of holographic, changing sky pattern up there above, okay? Uh, you know, I mean, it's arguably, you know, I mean, if that was just white paper up there or something like that that I was working in, you know, it's this is going to be, I don't know, whatever, five times more of a kind of a tension getting area than just straight color. If it was like colored blue or something like that, it would be a non-focal point at all. So, uh, sounds good, Debbie. All right. Hope you're having a good lunch there, Linda D. All right, let's see here. Uh, let's go, let's stamp this out in, I, I put all my stamping uh, inks away, working on these last uh, few scenes. I put all my black pads away, here we go. I have to find them all again. Okay, so I'm just gonna be using black brilliance here and we'll color with colored pencils and the acrylic paint pens. I'm trying to think of it, anything else should be utilized, and I think that'll do it. All right. I think this pad is fairly juicy and inked up. I can't remember the last time I inked it up though. All right, so just keeping in mind, I'm just keeping in mind um, the locations of those tree trunks. I don't have to be exact here. Um, you know, because we can adjust accordingly with our, uh, you know, other imagery that we use in here, so. Uh, focal point, main image here, or foundation, I should say. So foundation scene. And then we'll follow up with our filler stamps and foreground. This really sticks to this type of paper right here, okay, because it is a printable vinyl. But you get pretty good uh, impressions on top of the, uh, on top of that white pigment ink, though. All right, now I can I can add in that filler imagery around it, like the uh, the extra rocks and uh, such filler. But I think on this one, I did so much layering on these ones right here that there's a bunch of stuff underneath these trees. You don't do nearly as much layering on this one though. So with that being said, I'm going to stamp out my larger imagery here. And I'll, you know, roughly work around them a little bit. I, I still won't have to mask them off, and I'll know where everything's going. All right. So, again, smaller versions on this one. You, you know, you could use the, uh, the, the, you know, the gigantic art foamies on here too. But this is just such a smaller, a much smaller composition. So, I'm not going to do that. Nope. <laughs> it's like peeling. Uh, you really got to peel this off. I take it that's, it's it's sticking, it's sticking to that um, white brilliance ink, but it is sticking to that emulsion coating on there too. Like I said, this is you know it's a fairly kind of sticky. Oh, it's not sticking to my finger, but well there it goes like that. See, it it's a tacky surface like that. So that's the thing that really grabs your, you know, your uh, um, inkjet printer um, types of ink. Just designed to do that and designed to dry very quickly for you. 
in terms of that degree of saturation, especially for printing out, you know, like photographs or something like that, portraits, you know, where it's utilizing all the, uh, the different colors. For some reason, I mean, this scene is a little bit more narrow than the, the previous one, but just the fact that it's it's cut off down here from this size, it, it feels like it's short, like so much shorter than just a half. I don't know, the other one goes down here, but I don't know, this one feels like a, more than a, a half, a, you know, size uh, smaller for some reason. All right, and let's see which. Side. All right, masking this tree off right here. and roughly going for the center of this, right down that little column of uh, white pigment ink. You don't have to be right on it either. Eh, maybe I don't even need to mask this off. It looks like it's going to fit right on that, uh, that open spot. Okay, go like that. That stamped out a little bit lighter. I think it, I don't know, it's maybe it's because I had, I don't know, I, I thought that was going to cover it up, so I probably didn't even ink it up. All right, let's fill in with some additional filler imagery. Or, hmm, let's go ahead and let's add in those fences right now. Okay, so the fences on the other one are a lot lower in the composition, okay? Because these trees are all up here, okay? So the fences are going to be going in roughly right around in this space, in this composition. So let's add those in at this point in time. Debbie's in a heat wave here. Heat wave above zero. <laughs> Nine degrees. That's shorts weather, Debbie. <laughs> Out here in California, 75 degrees today, if not warmer. But it looks like for the next 10 days, we're getting rain. Which as everyone knows out in here in the West, we're in desperate need of. So dropping down, yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't think, it, I don't think it's 20 degrees, but quite a bit. I did a real similar composition to this, but uh, instead of using the uh, the covered bridge in here, I used the snowy covered bridge um, not too long ago. Okay. 
time to fill in with some additional trees in the background. I might mask off these trees a little bit. Which I normally don't do too much of. But in this case, with kind of minimal layering, um, I don't know. I might do that. Minimal media layering. Okay, this is the... Uh, Maple tops, okay. And they just look like that. If you have the Maple Duo too, you can use that. You just don't color in the top portion. Or you just mask it off like that and just stamp it out like that. I, I do it both with these ones too. All right, uh, I lied. I'm not gonna mask off that area. <laughs> it's, just, it's just too easy not to. And it really doesn't show up in the trees too much. I, I took a look at that and I thought, okay, this is airy enough. Well, then again, over here, maybe... Uh, I just won't... See, I'm not going in... I'm not stamping it completely. Or I'll go into it a little bit like that. Like that portion right there. And you really can't see it too much. Especially after I color in. Uh, okay, or you can just mop off a little bit off the sides like that. I'm not going to bother with this real narrow one here because that's just, it's too narrow and it's too tedious to, uh, you know, to have to mask off something like this little narrow strip too. And, I mean, you don't get it showing through too much. Where's Linda B? That would bother her. <laughs> that's what you said, Linda. Linda B, not Linda D. Unless Lin Linda D said that too. A couple of people said, you know, they'd, they'd notice it. I don't think, they, I don't know if they said it bothered them. Unless it did. <laughs> okay, so here's the sedge uh, cluster, sedge filler, actually. Just to get a little bit of texturing in. This is, I'm not representing a snowy, you know, terrain here in this scenario. Here, It's just going to be a nighttime uh, yeah, terrain and... You know, probably, you know, I don't know, cooler temperatures. I mean, that's the color of the holographic. It's that bluish tone, you know, so. Whatever, I don't know, midnight, whatever it, whatever it would represent to you. Okay, so adding this in um, around these open areas. Right, and that is basically it as far as our composition goes. The rest of it is just doing a little bit of, or a lot of coloring. <laughs> Not nearly as much as the previous uh, couple videos. Here, let me add in a little bit of extra texturing in here too. There's this little, um, winter twigs here it's like a mini winter twigs but see like in areas like this um good textural form but there's not a lot of textural variety in there so what you do is you just kind of mask off like this and position some of these little craggy little you know bushes like this within that space just to kind of and I add a little bit of sharpness into an otherwise kind of a monotonous field, okay? Monotonous in terms of texture. Glad you like the bridge, uh, Debbie. Okay, here we go. All right, so this scene is roughly going to be colored in... I can make those trees anything. We can make it kind of more fantasy-oriented and do a purple like I was doing not too long ago. I think we'll go with... Um, I think we'll go with some warm tones. Um, I don't know, pink's kind of interesting too, but... Uh, I just go with some warm tones. Okay, so this is going to get color in here, okay? I We could keep it monochromatic for 
a nighttime scenario, but I, I don't want to do that. I want to add color to this one. So, um, oh, let me do a couple other things in here too. One of the things that I added in to the last um, scene was a little bit of added texture in these trees in the background. Okay, so here's the little tree duo. Um, and I'll add, I don't know, maybe a couple of these other smaller images in the background there as well. Okay, and one of the things I mentioned too is, um, see if I had some yellow pigment ink or something like that, Brilliance, um, that would have given me a little bit of a head start too, those fall tones in the background. I think, I don't know. I mean, it's real universal having them white and I can do whatever to them still. But I don't know, there's something to be said for just having some inherent color just, you know, already established in there with the same type of action that I was doing with the white anyway. So it wouldn't have taken any more work. I've just been doing it in a little bit of yellow coverage as well. So, okay, so anyways, these trees, adding it in like so. Okay, something fell on the floor, it was my acrylic block. <laughs> I think that's enough there. That's enough texture in there, I think. Sometimes I'm kind of a minimalist when it comes to um, the different uh, imagery used in a scene, but I don't know. I'm, I'm wondering. I'm having second thoughts about that. I used so many different images in here and condensed a lot of images and put trees in here and rocks. Over, you know what I mean? It gave things a little bit of a denser look, just like kind of more in the spirit of those um, winter uh, Halloween maps um, from a couple months ago. And um, I don't know. It, there's something to be said for that, I think. Um, kind of a denser area. It, it just in terms of coloring things in, it just seems to give us like a really good head start to um, just overall... I don't know, finishing touches, having all of that different texture in there. Sometimes I thought it looks too busy, but, and I know I can simplify things, you know, which I've always done with um, colors and whatnot, inks applied on top, pigment inks and things like that. But um, I don't know. I, <laughs> these last three pieces have, I don't know, it's kind of changed my mind about maybe the amount of imagery that I use on things and just making the, kind of the overall image density a little bit thicker. I don't know, maybe I don't have to add so much to add more texturing and stuff like that, you know, in the end or something, I'm, you know, something like that, I'm not sure. Um, I usually do that with media, but I guess if we can do it with just imagery and stamp it out to begin with, you know, it's, it's just another option and way to go. Uh, Linda D is gonna be getting more stamps and maybe a foamy Foamies are fun. <laughs> That's for sure. I, I I was tempted, Linda, to mask, but then yeah, I got uh, I got I got lazy and decided not to. It was just too much for me to go like you know, to go like that and mask over. That's too much work. <laughs> Give it a try, Debbie. And be mindful of uh, the whole thing where I said, hey, it looks real blobby, you know what I mean? See, I, once you stamp all the imagery over that, you know, you can see the variation in like right here and here, it's it's a little bit more opaque and stuff, so. And then if you color over it, you, uh, you probably have colored pencils too, you know? Um, that's the thing to use. You can't really color over this with like dye-based inks though, okay? Because it's just gonna put that ink back into solution, it'll smear everywhere. Um, like liquid um, types of media. But um, let's see. Okay, so, so that being said, let's see if we could see any of those stars through that bottom area. I don't, I guess we don't see them too much. 
And you know what I mean? You see them showing through a little bit of these trees right here where I didn't have a column of white, you know, in back of it. But yeah, I guess, I don't know. I guess I, I guess I, you know, I masked or not masked out, but I, uh, um, whited out all of that paper patterning down there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You see a little bit showing through right here. You see a little bit of pattern in that area. You know what I mean? It, it just, it's barely visible there, but just keep that in mind. All right. Don't try to get things like super smooth. It's just, you know, there's no real point of it. Um, it's not going to matter. I'm talking about the white ink, you know, the white brilliance. But that's a good thing. I'm saying that that's a good thing. You know, you don't have to be like have, have a smooth, exact application of it. It's just kind of generally have it where you want your imagery to go and then go a little bit above it. And it looks like, you know, like some clouds in the background. Some of it might be underneath here, you know, where it's showing through the imagery. But, you know, who cares? All right. So my this is my base layer of colors being applied here. So again, I'm not doing like yellow here and red here or something like that. You know, if red's going to be in there, it's going to be on top of this really light shade right here. So this light shade is going to be applied um, on a lot of different imagery. Okay, I can see some of the stars showing through my tree right there. But again, you know what I mean? It just, it's, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter to me. It might matter to some people. Like, oh my gosh, I you know I see that little bit of you know vinyl showing through or something like that. But to me, that's it's not something that uh, you know that catches my attention at all, unless I'm really looking for it. You know. All right. So this white brilliance ink on the printable vinyl really accepts the colored pencil layering to a degree. Um, can you see that whole thing? It's see my, my general, you know, loose kind of base layer of that getting established. Let's put it on the bridge as well. This is, this is like my warm tone, uh, you know, peach Bellini that I was doing on all these ones. Yeah, it's it just kind of a, a warm base layer, okay? Even if other areas are going to be more cool in the end result as far as the general color scheme goes. Let's see. Yeah, both prismas and other coloring tools. Good, good. Acrylic paint pens, yeah. The acrylic paint pens are something I'm you know that I'm going to use on here too. Hello, Alicia and John, or whoever's on there. It's probably Alicia, right? <laughs> Good to see you. Thanks for joining in. Hello, Dana. Uh, is, is there a special company that sells these types of background stamps? Uh, well, the, the Scenic Stamps are Stampscapes here on the Stampscapes channel, so... All right, let's see here. All right, here's what we're gonna do here, okay? So just general concept in terms of coloring that makes things really easy. It's not just coloring um, like scenes, it's anything, okay? But I was taught the, oh, the concept of checkerboarding things, okay? Now, I mean, there are objects like here, you know, like a rooftop. I usually like to leave my rooftops darker, I mean, lighter than the vertical edges of structures. That's because, you know, lighting is usually coming from above. You can have side lighting or something like that, but just in general for structures, you leave the rooftop a little bit lighter. Now, I mean, the rooftop could be, you know, black tiling or something like that, in which case it's not going to be lighter. I mean, you could have this bridge and it's, you know, it has a black top or whatever, and the the rest of the thing is painted white, okay? So that in that case, then, you know, the rooftop's going to be darker. But aside from that, if we're talk, just talking about general lighting, leave those areas a little bit uh, 
lighter on tops of things, you know, it's like any pen or anything like this, any pad, any three-dimensional structure like this, you know, it's just lighter on the top and you can see that it's shaded on the side because we have, you know, top lighting, which you usually find in nature. It's just a good easy roll. But as far as the rest of it, it's like, how do you color this right here? Do you leave the color? Do this, is this brown right here, this road all super dark brown? I like to leave things where it's lighter moving into a scene. So if it's a body of water, you know, there's an entry point of lightness on it, um, a stream, something like that, a body, you know what I mean? Anything like that. Leave a little bit of light or you just oscillate it like this. So this is checkerboarding right here. So here's road. I'm coloring right here. Here's light. Uh, or here is a little bit darker. It's lighter right here. I'm not doing any darker down here, lighter right here, and then you can make it darker right here. So what does that look like? In terms of an overall color scheme, you can see it right here. Light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, okay? And you can see it through any of these. You know, this isn't, I wouldn't say this is dark, but this, it's lighter than that, so it's light, dark. You see that's color right there? Light, darker right here, and then it's lighter right here, and then darker right here. Same thing right here, okay? So, it's, I mean, it, when I say dark, it doesn't have to be so dark or something like that. It's fairly light right there, but it's just lighter than other areas of the road. So you see this little bit of lightness down here, okay? Sky goes dark, light, dark, right? Here's this structure right here. It's light, dark. So it's like dark, light, dark. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you're not, it's, you're not breaking it down and saying, oh, wait, you know, I, I should have made that, you know, that area lighter because this one's dark. You know, it's not like that, you know, but it's, it's just a general structuring to keep in mind. You know, you can do that with any of your cards, you know, if you're doing um, word stamps or something like that, you know, and you want those word stamps to stand out, you know, it says, you know, happy birth, you know, here's your card right here. It says happy birthday right here. You can make, you know, the area around it a little bit darker, right? You're just making a vignette, but on the top it's dark. And then where it says happy birthday, it's lighter right here and darker down below. So chances are you're, you're doing that anyway uh, on a lot of the different things. You're just not thinking about it in terms of, you know, calling it checkerboarding or the oscillation of light and dark, you know. It's just something that makes things stand out. But in just an open area, we don't have, you know, we have other things going on across here. So you're just making certain things stand out a little bit more than others, okay? By keeping it in the light, you know. And with something like this, I mean, it, like I said, it doesn't really matter what just as long as it's kind of varied and it just makes it a little bit more interesting. Okay, so this is the light. What is this right here? Sand. So any type of light color like this. Um, if you're doing this in dye-based inks, you know, the distress inks have a really great array of uh, light-toned, warm colors you can use. As mentioned, um, old paper, antique linen, walnut stain, you know, stuff like that would be great. So, you know, here's my pencils like this. I'm going to just be working through some warm tones like this. I'm just kind of working it from light tones through the darker tones, okay? And then we'll work some uh, greens into it as well as the uh, fall colors up in those fall trees like that. Okay, let's see. We are at negative 35 to 45 for over a week. Wow. I see what, yeah. I see what you mean about those heat waves there jokingly but in comparison my gosh all right let's see 
And then Linda D was mentioning, uh, I didn't even know, uh, but there was an earthquake up in Northern Cal. That's quite a ways from me because I'm like completely south. So that's probably, I don't know, 12 hour drive for me or something like that where that earthquake was. Good thing that people aren't having like an earthquake and weather like that, although the weather in itself is just, you know, that's enough. All right, so this is my next tone right here. It's just a little bit of a darker yellow. It's a little bit warmer, I think. It has a little bit, it's more a little bit more gold. Okay, so I'm kind of giving everything kind of a monochromatic base layer coat, and then we'll start moving into um, kind of more specific areas of tone, you know, road brown, grassy meadow, green, and background trees, a little bit of, you know, fall colors, even though we're beyond fall right now, you know, my, my patterning would be, uh, maybe stamping out some springtime types of tones or something like that. But of this composition that I did, I think this one was my favorite one in terms of, uh, the overall, it kind of end result with those fall colors up there. I'm still kind of tweaking these things. I'm adding in a little bit of a, even though I already sprayed them, I'm able to use um, some of my colored pencils on here still and just apply it right over the top of the uh, uh, the spray sealant just to get a little bit more of a kind of a brighter, I don't know, kind of touches here and there like that. I don't know if you can see that, but you see that adding that down there kind of warmed up that little area a little bit more. So just getting a little bit more intensity, especially um, on this blue when I added some brighter blues into these shadow areas. So still tweaking this one. <laughs> After I did that last scene, um, I thought, oh my God, some of the, the first two scenes look anemic by comparison. So I thought I need to bring those up to match um, kind of the visual intensity of the last one a little bit more um, with brighter colors. Okay, so on this one right here, I'm just adding um, more of this color too. So you can add, you know, press a little bit harder, give it a little bit more of a saturation to get a darker value out of it. So you get darker, you know, darker with more of this color as well as just moving on to the next, you know, darker tone. I usually like to kind of give it a little bit of a, a lighter touch though at first. Um, this paper is, with that Brilliance ink, really does accept the colored pencils very well, but um, it will do that to an extent. You can't layer down, you know, five thick layers of colored pencil on the top of that white Brilliance ink. Otherwise, it just kind of, you know, it's, it's just, it's too smooth by then. There's too much wax, you know, from the colored pencils that are already applied, you know, because the ideal paper for colored pencils is something like, you know, a matte paper that has some tooth to it, not, you know, you know, printable vinyl, which is smooth and coated like that. So, but the Brilliance Ink does give it a little bit of tooth and allows it to accept this type of media on here. As long as your pencils are reasonably soft, you can't have like a, I don't, probably not like a super hard, um, whatever leaded colored pencil. It's not lead, but that being said, I don't know, experiment around with what you have there. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Um, let's go in, let's start going, moving into the greenish colored areas. This one's a little bit of a, I would say it's kind of a muted green, if anything. Not super bright, but again, I like kind of building it up to those um, values and intensities. So see that? It's just like a little bit of a kind of a pastel green kind of established in there. I'm not trying to keep this like off the road or off my trees at all or anything like that. I might not want like a super intensity of it, but I do want 
my colors to kind of harmonize and blend. All right. Okay. Now that, I think let's go in with some brighter tones. I'm not sure which one of my greens is uh, softer than others, but sometimes I run into, you know, this is just all out of a Prismacolor set, and I'll use one pencil and the next one will be like, you know, like, I don't know, twice as soft as the other one. I don't know if it's that much, but I'll find that, you know, one of them will kind of um, apply so much faster because of that softer um, what a density, I guess. Um, some people, years ago, I knew someone that used um, colored pencils all the time, but their favorite um, color, uh, they weren't really colored pencils, but they were the, those watercolor pencils. They liked the watercolor pencils, but they never used water to, you know, make it water soluble. They didn't use that application of those they just liked the watercolor ones at that time because they said they were softer than colored pencils which maybe they are i don't know all right so going in and getting a little bit more intensity here see it's kind of waking up now a little bit with some brighter tones in here brighter intensities Sometimes the brightest colors are in the shadows, so we'll add some deep shadows here underneath these trees at the base of the trees like that. I'm kind of, I'm not adding it everywhere in here. I've left some areas kind of just, you know, with either a lighter application or no application of this at all. It kind of looks like I'm doing like this type of thing. I'm, you know, throughout the piece. You can't tell, I mean, you can see what it looks like on a white piece of paper, but it's harder to tell because I'm adding it over the top of other colors like that. But that's roughly kind of the mark, you know, that's been applied here. Let's see. Yeah, take a peek, Dana. Um, there's a lot of um, lessons online. Um, some of the sets, you know, there's specific lessons using specific sets too. There's um, many workshops using specific sets. This one's really soft here. Look at that intensity. Look at that glow. Oh my gosh. So speaking of that, um, but yeah, yeah, there's there's a, like different sets out there, um, Stampscape sets that have, you know, whole video lessons, you know, five part, six part that take you from compositions, basic usage. One of the biggest things is just composition, um, what we call, what I call stamp sketching. And that's just blending of the different imagery together. And then you can, you know, you base your um, type of, you know, whatever type of uh, coloring method or look you want that's what you would choose for your your media okay so just keep with the uh, compatible media when applying so if you're doing something like this and you know you stamp all this out but you want it you know you want to use your watercolors with it then um you know stamp on a matte paper probably not a glossy one if you want a glossy look then of course stamp on glossy surfaces or semi-gloss you know cardstock and spray seal with a glossy spray you know that type of thing so just yeah just compatible media okay so here's some brown we haven't finished off with those greens but let's start developing some of these trees here so you can see kind of the direction this is going in or it will kind of move in, I guess. Okay, so let's see that brown right there. 
So these are these, you know, this this scenario right here, this scene scenario is kind of, you know, it's going to be kind of daytime lighting in here, but with a nighttime, you know, sky up top like that. And again, see, I just kind of color that in right there. So that's where those trees right there just completely overlap, you know, especially like this tree right here. But, you know, when you go in and start filling in with color in, an, in a stamp that's reasonably dense, okay, with texture, you know, you don't really have to mask those off too much. It depends what you stamp behind there, of course, but... Um, and how dense that imagery is, but if it's fairly airy, you don't have to really mask off. Or you can choose to mask off if you want to or not. All right, so I'm adding this brown down in this grassy area. I think that's a really good color to add into um, kind of a grassy terrain. It makes it a little bit more earthy and natural looking as opposed to kind of like a you know, fluorescent green sometime or something like that. All right, and let's go in with the covered bridge here. Remember that whole thing about the darker sides? Although I don't like my sides to be completely uniform, so that's a little bit darker in the back, lighter in front. We'll go darker in here in the back and maybe lighter up front, or you can you know, put, give some pattern to your trees a little bit. These trees in the background are just all green. They'll move into kind of your oranges and reds and things like that, but you can give it kind of a, a decent warm brown base as well, like that. This all being said, this is one way to work too, you know, by just kind of bringing things you know, from the very general to the more specific. I mean, you could color your, you know, your grass is green, your bridge, you know, trees brown, the road brown or something like that. Never, you know, the two, you know, the different colors shall meet, you know, as well. But I just find that this is just a very easy way to do it. Sometimes, you know, if you start blending everything together, it's like, oh, wait, wait, you know, this is going to get orange up here or something like that in my fall tones. Then why is it green right now? So, you know, if you haven't done like that before, where you're kind of building things through a certain range where it just doesn't look like kind of the end result like in the early stages, sometimes that gets confusing for people. If they've seen something done and, you know, they don't remember kind of what things look like, you know, in the process, it might get kind of frustrating. They're like, hey, you know, these trees aren't kind of orange yet. You know, I wanted them to be fall colors. You know, something has gone wrong, you know, but it, but it hasn't. It's just, you know, you haven't got to that stage yet. So, you know. Uh, some people don't, you know, they don't want to do this. But for me, I, it just, I don't have to stay within lines like this either. Uh, so if I'm coloring, you know, I'm coloring this tree right here. But if I go out here, it's not really any big deal with this, with this style of, uh, you know, whatever, rendering rendering of forms, shadows, and everything like that. Okay. It's getting a little bit saturated with uh, ink as I was going with that brown there it occurred to me that, like a lot of it isn't transferring on there because it's starting to be like wax on wax, okay? But I don't know, if I have like a brown that's like super, super soft, it, 
you know, it'll apply on there just fine. I have a tough time in keeping the light dark thing in mind when I go to add color. Well, I don't know, whatever you're doing, Linda, it looks fine to me. Um, you don't have to keep it in mind though, a lot of times. Um, here's this little light blue, look at that light blue in there. This one's a really soft light blue. What you can do though, Linda, is as you're doing your coloring though, it could be more of like a fine tuning type of thing. See this, I mean, there's, this isn't real apparent right here, you know, you know, this oscillation of light and dark across that, but it could be, I could develop it now from here on, you know what I mean? So just things are darker now. It doesn't, when we say dark and light, we don't have to mean, you know, like a dark and light, meaning uh, like a 50% jump in value or something like that. Dark and light could be 30% value, 40%, 30%, 50%, or something like that. It doesn't have to be like extremes of contrast or something like that. But if you just kind of keep things modeled, see like with my grasses here, you can still see those little tufts of grass or like right in here. It's not very visible right now because I don't have a lot of contrast going. So let's say from here, I want to vary that a little bit more to make it look like a richer surface potentially. And you can do that with contrast. So what I'm doing right here is I'm just going into my little, you know, the sedge filler has um, different texture on it like this. Okay, so this is the sedge filler stamp like that. Okay, that's stamped throughout this whole area in the back. So all you're doing is in, in regards to that oscillation, when I get into my darker tones, I'm just coloring that area, those textures that stamped out, so it's like that now, okay? So what that looks like on here, in all my little tufts of grass, and we'll do that, especially in the trees back in here, so I'm just coloring it like that. I mean, I, you know, we'll do that, we'll keep doing that too. So there wasn't a huge value jump or anything like that, or, you know, it's not terribly apparent that oscillation of light and dark, but now, um, see these little areas like that. Now it is, oops. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now it's getting, you can start to see these areas a little bit more dark, light, dark, light, dark, <laughs> you know, and light right back of here. I, I like to make my areas on my trees a little bit darker, um, like this, you know, putting them in shadow, something like that. But see those little tufts right in here. So you just look for little, those little black areas right in here, okay. Now, I mean, we don't have something so pronounced in here as like a definitive texture to color in. The, it's more of like this general open space like that. So let's just define it a little bit more. Let's go with the set, you know, the edge of the grassy area and the road. So that could be an area that's a little bit darker like this. Here's these little fences right here. I'm going to add in a little bit of shadow, you know, shading at, at the base of those, like that. Base of my trees, like this. Okay, but, so I'm adding a little bit like this, but then let's carry this out of here a little bit more. I'm just using a very light touch. It's like a 5% version of this. And, you, you know, I mean, this road can be, you know, it can go from dark, lighter, darker, see this little darker, but it, and, you know, it's also going like this. Here's, it's darker on the edge of the road, lighter in here and darker out here. So on um, kind of a vertical plane, you know, you're oscillating lights and darks like that too. I mean, this is just a tree here, so that's darker version, but it's light, dark, light, dark, 
light dark like that too. I'm not no, I'm not thinking about all this, you know, when I'm when I'm doing this type of thing. I'm rendering grass or something like that here. You know what I mean? I'm just I'm not thinking about like something on the overall, oh, did I get that light there? You know what I mean? It's not like, it's called, you know, we. I just call it checkerboarding. It's one of my teachers came up with it, you know, described something as that. Um, but I'm just kind of rendering some little thing like this. And then I, I just look at it overall and I think, I you know, I'll add in a little tweak here and there, you know. I mean, it. you could have an, this area in here, if this whole area in here was dark, Okay, and then, but you left, you know, some areas a little bit lighter out here. Then it would just be like dark, lighter, dark. It doesn't have to have all these little breakdowns of oscillated light throughout there, okay? So, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm conscious of that varying landscape like that, but it's more so, you know, I'm just, I'm applying a shadow here and, you know, in terms of my application of that whole checkerboarding concept, it's just like, you know, when I get down to some final touches or something like that, or I'm really developing a shadow like this, like right in here, you know, like I, I'm thinking about, okay, I can make this darker and lighter right here and darker right here. You know what I mean? Or not, you know? And there's just varying degrees of it, you know, based on, you know, the degree of kind of um, contrast that you choose to apply. Okay, so uh, let's see. All right. Huh. I still have the uh, the paint pens to come, so. There's a lot of things, you know, I'm developing this pretty good with the colored pencils, but we also have um, the paint pens that will come. Okay, so if I made areas that are, you know, too dark or something like that sometimes, um, you know, the paint pens can remedy that. I'll just put, like, extra highlighting in there if... Uh, Let's say I blocked off all my road or something like that. It's like super dark in here or something like that. Then you just go back in with your white pigment ink and then just, you can tweak your kind of lighting scheme that way too. So in something like this, you know, applying your media is kind of, you know, controlling light and shadow. But if you also use that media, like paint pens and, uh, you know, the white pigment ink. These days you can bring back and reveal lighter areas as well. So, you know, there's, there's, no, there's not a point in no return in this uh, type of thing. You know, for the most part, you know, in terms of all practical types of applications, I mean, I, I do understand. I mean, if if I just block this whole thing out and it's all black, yeah, you know, but, you know, we're not going to do that. <laughs> it, would, it would take forever to, you know, to black it all out anyway. So, I mean, it's just, you know, it's not going to happen. All right, so anyways, so what I'm doing here, here's my little tweak here, so... I'm going to make things kind of center lit. So on the trees right here, on this side of the scene, I'm darkening the right side of my trees so that it looks like the lighting is coming from this area. And on these trees over here on the uh, left of the scene, I'm darkening mostly the left side of the tree. All right. Any little shadows at the base of my trees. I like to make things pretty dark right at the base. Like that. Okay. And let's add a little tone to our structure here. 
Okay. And let's hit our trees now. I don't have too many orange pens, it looks like. I don't know, I have like one <laughs> in this big 48 color Prisma color set. You know, I don't think I've used up ones before, but I'm not sure. Uh, hello, Shelly. Good to see you. Glad you like it, Shelly. And in a little bit of a, a different version to go along with the uh, the forest bridge scene. A much faster version of the, you know, the full size, you know, gazillion layers of ink uh, scenes, triptych or whatever. And then, I don't know, I don't know if I can do a, I don't think I can do a five minute scene, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't know, I guess I could, maybe on something on the foils or something like that. I want to get like each one of these scenes like a faster and faster, but different version of this uh, composition. All right, adding some of these warm tones now down in this grassy area. Yeah, it's green, but you know, kind of fall kind of tones you get that you know the changing of a uh, um foliage even on ground cover too so bring some of that orange right down in here okay i might have to do most of my work with the uh these orangish warm tones up here with my paint pens unless i have a pencil or pen that's fairly um, uh, soft. Let me do something that looks a little bit dark. There we go. One of my bulbs in my uh, studio lights here blue, so it's a little bit darker. All right, this is red, scarlet red. This is where you start to, uh, you know, I start to kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of bury the uh, the green tones that were already applied in the background there, underneath all these reds. All right, that is not very soft of a pen. This one is softer. Okay, and it's getting fairly dark too. It's a little bit muddled, but that's where my uh, pain pens will come into play. I don't, I don't remember if I've done this one in a, this uh, vinyl holographic cardstock with these fall color types of color schemes, you know, maybe because it's a nighttime looking paper, you know, or something, I don't know. So I would have been doing probably more reddish, I mean, uh, nighttime types of uh, scenarios on this paper, not, you know, daytime color schemes, but, um, uh, you know, um, artistic license. <laughs> All right, so I think that will do it there with the colored pencils. Hmm. It, because, first of all, because that's most of the colors that I was going to use, but secondly, it's, it's really, uh, the surface has kind of achieved uh, somewhat of a super saturation. Let's get a little bit more uh, tone down in those grassy areas, a little bit more shadow areas, I think. 
uh, if possible. It's really muddled right down in here where I've added a, like a ton of media already. So it's just like I'm trying to apply like a, a layer of wax into a, you know, an area that's already like built up and waxy. So that's not really applying very well. Um, let's try this one, dark green. Eh, a little bit softer. Okay. You like the stars, Shelley? They're fun, aren't they? What I like about these holographics is it's pretty much every color of the rainbow is in them, so they pretty much go along with whatever you want to use, you know, whatever color scheme you're doing. It's, you know, it's both a cool color scheme, but you have the yellows and oranges and reds in there as well. So... I don't know. I, I think it matches pretty well uh, color-wise, you know, thematically-wise. I don't know, but I, I think it's definitely fun. So, you know what I mean? Uh, so in stamping, you know, if the theme is... The overall theme is having fun with it anyway, so... I mean, that... that that goes with that goes with it. <laughs> that matches the spirit of what we're doing, right? Things don't have to be realistic in scenes, you know. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna. If we we're going for realism, um, yeah, I wouldn't be using like holographics. We wouldn't be, you know, just stamping on whatever red foil, gold foil. You know what I mean? Okay, shaking up my pens here. Kind of the color schemes that we've been working with with our pencils, right? Um, and we'll start working it from darker tones to lighter tones with the colored pencils I was working from light tones and then working into the darker tones. Okay. It's the opposite with these because these are a little bit more, um, uh, opaque. Okay. They're not opaque. You know, you can see through them, but a little bit more so with transparent thing colors alcohol inks, uh, dye-based inks, colored pencils to some extent, you work from light to dark with opaque media where you want the lighter things showing um, full, you know, more frontal um, over things, dark to light. Okay, but I'm not going like super dark. It's more of like a mid-tones, you know, to the darker tones like that. Or lighter tones, mid-tones to light tones. All right, so uh, things like this, you know, would work too. Uh, let's go with that. So see, so it's like the same colors I was using with the, with the colored pencils. That's how you just, you know, that's how you kind of work your color schemes and whatnot. Things don't have to match all the time, you know. Like in, uh, I mean. You know, these manufacturers, they make things like, okay, all their things match, you know, because uh, they're, this color has to match, this color has to match, this color, or whatever, you know, it, and that makes it kind of convenient for working in themes, but, you know, that's just addressing one thing. What you want to work more is, you know, like value schemes from light to dark where things don't match. So if you have things a little bit off from one another, then you can create more of a three-dimensional type of aspect. So if, it, if anything's like even close, that's that's fine. You know, you don't have to have like the exact same color, you know what I mean, uh, all the time. Unless it's just something that's kind of a, giving you a head start as, you know, as far as like a color choice of, you know, something to think about. But just eyeball it, you know. And if it's close enough, you know, then you're good, you're good, you know, something like, see these right here? 
I mean, maybe not that one. <laughs> but I mean, it's close enough, though. I'm using them all to kind of to harmonize with each other. Okay, so uh, green tones. You can start off with any any colors right here that you want. But I'm adding some of these on the lighter portions of my things. So these represent little shimmering kind of touches. So it's kind of like in the opposite area that you're adding a shadow to. These are the shadow areas right here. And then the, you know, the lighter areas are going to be like on the top of that ridge right there. Uh, I'll show you if I can see. So see this where this shadow is right here. I'm adding this like on the top portion of that. It doesn't really stand out too much because I'm adding it. I always kind of start adding these into areas where it doesn't show up too much. So it's roughly the same value as the pen, but the pen is just giving it a little bit of extra texture. Okay. So you can see it a little bit right there. Okay. They'll look like really weird textures too, because, you know, I haven't added it around in the scene to give it kind of a common textural theme here. So, but we will. It often looks out of place. And then I kind of blend things in a little bit more. Okay, you, this will probably show up in the trees a lot more because the trees are quite a bit darker. All right, so it's, you know, it's kind of brightening it up in there and it gives it that kind of shimmering texture, um, you know, that foliage and, you know, deciduous types of uh, um, trees would have. It kind of matches the, uh, you know, that the um the holographic sometimes you want to contrast against that um, you want to have something just really mellow against something so kind of dynamic like that but you could also do things you can do it another way too where you know the bottom part is kind of equally or you know somewhat exciting in terms of a texture and light and whatnot you know, to, to match with it too. So different types of uh, things, or you can have both in there. You can have areas that are kind of super mellow and, uh, you know, from a textural standpoint, maybe considered boring, but it contrasts with those more exciting areas to give it more pop, you know, by contrast too. All right, so seeing those trees kind of coming to life a little bit, they look a little bit more three-dimensional this way. These are the, uh, this is the, uh, the pens that I'm working with now are the three millimeter um, pens. And then we have the uh, uh, 0.7 millimeter. I'm getting more comfortable. I thought I was comfortable with these, Point three, I mean, a uh, three millimeter, like really large pens like this. But the last uh, week or so, I'm getting more comfortable about using them more, a little bit more extensively. I'm able to get like a pretty small dot out of just like touching it just barely to the page. So I'm able to get, you know, like like these little dots like that just by like touching it a little bit. But you can also do the you know, the, the larger three millimeter dot as well. And when I say I was, you know, I'm getting more comfortable, I don't know, I just didn't think about using it for kind of smaller applications. It wasn't because it felt awkward to do it before. I just, I don't know, I never really thought about it. Uh, like try, trying to, uh, you know, vary the, uh, the application uh, rate. All right, so that 
is that that yellow really uh this yellow one really uh kind of brought things to life i think good morning nicole and wa All right, this is white here. I might not have to use too much of the too much of the smaller ones in here. Let me show you what this look is looking like with all of that glare on there. Okay. Remember, this is sticker paper too, so you can peel this whole thing off and you know stick it um, on your window or wherever you want. <laughs> Yeah, this white one really stands out. I'll be a little bit more selective, I think, in terms of my uh, usage of this one. See, that one really stands out. Maybe, maybe I should move to the uh, the point seven millimeter uh, when it comes to this white here. I'll add a few little touches here and there. All right, see that right there? It's kind of like that white really, that, okay, now the, that being said that one of the things I always mention is that this these paint pens kind of, they dry darker, okay? They're more opaque here, but they do dry in the direction of transparency. They don't become transparent, but they kind of move in that direction, so. Sometimes what you see is not what you get in the end result. In this case, that's a kind of a good thing because it it blends and harmonizes with the colors that it's been applied over the top of a little bit more. But sometimes, you know, you, you do want a little bit more contrast with the, you know, the applications as they look when freshly applied. So, uh, but then you can just apply more you know, and build it up a little bit more. Glad you like this version, Nicole. I bet, you know, I was thinking about this um, when I was doing those other pieces. I thought, eh, I want to do this one. I like the composition, but I wanted to try it on some different stocks. So I think this would look cool maybe too on like some deep blue um, card stock, but maybe stamped in white or something, you know, kind of in like, it's like reverse and reverse imagery. So is that looking fairly three-dimensional to you guys? Let's make these areas pop out a little bit more. Let's move into the, uh, the uh, 0.7 millimeter. Let's bring more color and color shimmer into the composition. So this is orange. Okay. And this is, uh, again, while I wasn't really, you know, you know, uh, concerned about my trees just on my last scene too um, that I did in that fall tone scene the trees were pretty green you know and then I added additional media over the top of it and then you go into it with paint pens like this so you get a kind of a base layer of some common colors with you know the the rest of the scene but then you can take other areas and you know a different you know whatever direction you want to take them in with your additional media, paint pens and colored pencils in this case. All right. I love working on this paper though, this um, printable vinyl. All right, bringing some of this, these touches down here into the grassy area. This orange. It's merely making that area come alive, I think. And yellow here. This one's like almost, it's almost neon yellow.
Yeah, I don't need to add too much of this down. I already got a lot of it with the uh, with three millimeter. I don't know, maybe I am adding a lot to it because it's fun. <laughs> okay. All right, let's get to that. Uh, well, let's go with this beige-ish tone. Thanks, Linda D. Good to see you. All right. This whole composition really stands out against that background. <laughs> I didn't have, I, I, I think it would have been better if I had a little bit more of that white, you know, um, in that background um, that I block things out of to represent some clouds back there. I mean, it looks okay though, but um, a little bit of that transition kind of texture, I think. Okay, so this is going to be adding in a lot of highlighting and contrast. This composition right here too, if I haven't really printed out something. I need to print out like a large photograph too and just print it out on, you know, do a photo stamping of this. Um, piece. I guess it could even be in um, uh, some of the vellum applications too. Maybe I should do this in vellum. I keep seeing that I haven't gotten around to the vellum. I don't know, there's like a lot of other things I want to do too, but um, this on vellum with the, the clouds in the background would be kind of cool. Unless I've already done that, I might have. Um, I can't remember. I'll have to go back and check out, take a look at the playlists or something. All right. Let's see. Sometimes I can't remember what I did already. You know, it is like a, there's over a thousand videos up, and someone recently said, "Hey, uh, oh, they were mentioning." Um, she said, "Yeah, you used a different pigment ink on uh, for some white trees." But I was thinking about the recent white trees that I've been doing, and I said, eh, "It might have been like the moonlight white, you know, because I was doing some stuff with the uh, the art foamies." And then you, they pointed me to a, a video from, and it was like a, like in the 400s or something like that. I don't know if it was one of you guys, but uh, that might be watching here. But yeah, I, I completely forgot about that. But it was I was using like exclusively, I think, clear snap, um, the uh, the white, you know, the pigment inks from back then. And it might have been the only one that I had, the frost white. Um, frost white. What were the names of those pads? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Color box. I always forgot the name of the color box. We haven't been, you know, we haven't been using them for a while. Uh, being that they're closed. Okay, kind of redefining those little fences back there at the white pen a little bit. This is the 0.7 millimeter. Bringing out those little rocks that I forgot to on my last one until the end. You don't have to bring out all of them, but bring out some. All right. 
white, adding a little bit more of the, probably the white patterning down the center area here. Uh, a little bit more detailing, center-oriented detailing probably is probably a good idea. Okay, some additional tree trunks. branches, a little bit of structuring. These little tree trunks and things like that are in the designs, but you know, I just kind of loosely stick with them. So I, I can even see them at some point in time well, with all this coloring that's been applied over the top of it a lot of times. All right. So, uh, a little bit of highlights on some fence, post rungs, whatever. This. Okay. And one of the things I didn't do on here yet that I wasn't sure if I'd do or not are those foreground elements. I think we better go with the... I'm, almost, I'm never certain about this part, but if I have to use the stays on, especially over those colored pencils, because, you know, like dye based things, I don't think I'm going to stick to it. I have stamped the VersaFine Claire over the top of that waxy colored pencil, but I'm not sure if that would wipe off potentially a lot easier than stays on. I think stays on might be a little bit more permanent. I'm going to spray seal everything anyway, but um, I don't know. I, I think the stays on might adhere to that waxy buildup a lot better. So it sure, uh, it sure stamps on stamps on there nice and solid though you know, without any problem right over the top of that uh, colored pencil. All right, so a little bit more kind of that grassy textural foreground like that. And that's my, uh, there's my stays on cleaner right there. <laughs> and let's get some overhanging tree. I think I need to break up this a little bit, you know, that uh, starry sky area. Not cover it up, but just break it up a touch. All right, so. Ooh, I really stuck. Let me go with a quicker. Okay, this is working much better. Faster, <laughs> faster application and the release. Okay, let's go like that. It's a little more of a canopy, a little bit more three-dimensional now, I think. And frames off a touch better. Let me go a little bit more on here on the sides. It's because I can't really add like tone over here. Um, 
with just color. Maybe you can do it with colored pencils or something like that. So I'm doing it with imagery. I'm just kind of framing off the, the bottom left and right corners like that. I think it makes it look a little bit more, oh, I don't know, three-dimensional as mentioned. All right, so let's take a look at this and see. Here it is without the glare on there. I, I'm not going to stamp out that uh, little character in here. I, I thought that was a little bit too short of space. I could, I could put something in there, like some characters walking down the, uh, the road if I want to, but I think I'm going to leave it open in this one. So there we have it there. Um, starry kind of little nighttime <laughs> patterning up there. Oh, I forgot. Let's add in some white pigment ink into the uh, mix in the foreground. I almost forgot about that for a little bit of added dimension. Yeah, you wouldn't know it was a uh, vinyl, huh, Linda? It's just that little peekaboo area of, uh, hello, Rhonda. It's that little peekaboo area of stars up there. So I just retained probably, I don't know, what is it? Maybe 20% of the surface like that. But pretty effective though, I think, you know, even though when you just have a little bit of it like that, even it's like, showing through over here a little bit too, which is kind of cool. Okay, so this is the white pigment ink, and we'll just apply a little bit of it at the base of things to give it a little bit of a textural dimension or contrast, I guess. Everything is looking fairly sharp like that, and I, I, I do like the look of it as is, but I like of it, I like it a little bit more just with that additional variation. I don't necessarily like things like all soft, but I like textural contrast, so things that are nice and sharp. I like them contrasted in areas that are a little bit more kind of diffused, you know, so we get a, a range of, you get a range of colors, they're lighter um, against darker, they're duller against brighter, but they're also, forms are soft against kind of sharp. Okay. So I'm adding it in the lighter area, but then I'm creeping this out like this into the areas around it, okay. And I just do it really slowly, especially on this paper because it dries so fast. some of it down at the base of those trees it kind of gives it that misty kind of misty morning type of look or I don't know whatever time it would be you know after you know twilight or something like that or Okay, adding a little bit up, up here into my trees. Be careful not to add too much though. I don't want to go overboard because I didn't add, I don't have a lot of that white in back of the trees showing over the tops of them. So in bringing this down into the trees, I don't want to add too much of that. I think it looks right, really good here in the foreground. All right, there we go. Can you guys see that textural kind of difference? It's right, right down in here, right back in here, a little bit back up in here, there, especially right around in here. I didn't want to put it too much up there because we already have this like little tiny kind of area of uh, 
you know, the starry vinyl showing. I don't want to cover that up too much. I've muted it out a little bit to vary it, but, um, you know, not too much. Okay, so here's that thing too. Here's that thing about kind of oscillating light and dark. I've used some of it right here. Um, none of it right here. And then I've used it again down here. So it's going from light darker to light like that. So that's what I mean about, you know, you can tweak these things at any given time, you know, during your entire process. If certain areas are too light and you want to darken them up, you can add more colored pencils in here or something like that, paint pen. You know, so there's all, all there's all kinds of any point in time when you can still kind of tweak things. Like I said, I'm still kind of tweaking um, these pieces, and these pieces are already kind of spray sealed. So let's see what. Just out of curiosity, let's see what this uh, looks like right here. So here's that smaller composition. It goes like right there, almost. I use the larger trees, you know. And, you know, this one right here, but there it is right there. So you can see that pathway kind of going like that, right down in that area. So little comparison contrast with that. This one has the twinkly sparkle. We could do this gigantic piece. I don't think I want to on uh you know a piece of the uh holographic vinyl i don't want to do this on there because i would be blocking off this whole area <laughs> in white you know what i mean it'd be probably easier just to like cut this area off up here and just to you know paste some paper behind there or something like that so that's why we're doing this kind of more on a slim line this was this was like quite a bit of a uh, you know, applications of the white as is, though, like that, so, and, and that was enough. <laughs> the blocking out doesn't take too much time, but, uh, uh, not a, uh, not a full-size piece of paper type of exercise for me, probably, if I'm blocking out 80% of the, uh, the paper with the, the white pigment ink. It'd be kind of cool, though, I guess. So I'm just tweaking the uh, the bridge a little bit more. It needed a little bit more uh, kind of a brighter values. It doesn't have to be darker values, but just a little bit brighter with the use of, you know, some additional light layering on there. Okay. Yeah, it looks a little bit better, huh? All right. So anyways... <sighs> Hope you guys like it. Uh, that vinyl is pretty fun to uh, to utilize. Um, if you've just joined in, one of the things that I always kind of reiterate over and over again is um, if you're looking to uh, kind of play around with um, this type of combination of media, just make sure that it's the uh, it's the printable vinyl. Okay, in terms of brilliance inks and colored pencils on it stuff like that okay you can do other types of things on holographic vinyls but you're just it's not going to be this technique right here because the brilliance ink is never going to stick to um just a holographic vinyl it has to be the printable one that's the thing that gives it that i don't know whatever that emulsion coating that allows for that brilliance ink water-based brilliance ink to stick to it but you know you can check out all my uh any of the uh the holographic like the recent like blue holographic card stocks too which you would kind of approach the same way as the holographic vinyls just in terms of some different looks that you can get on those types of surfaces but you're just in many cases you'll need to spray seal the non-printable varieties of these types of metallic um, surfaces like this so again this one's kind of interesting you know i don't know if, i usually don't um, utilize the um, sticker paper aspect of this but you know we'll mat this on some you know paper of some sort and you could in theory just peel off the back of this and then stick it to whatever you want to but that this adhesive on this even though it's really thin 
man, it's, if I just like touch it like that, it's like, oh my God, you know, you cannot get that off. It's like a really super tacky permanent adhesive. So I just find it easier just to take my tape gun, you know, and lay it down like that so I can really position it, you know, when I mat, you know, I'm not gonna mat it on here. I'm just saying, for example, but I don't know, there's all kinds of, you know, you can stamp on something like this and I don't know, you know, a small section of it and you put it on your, you know, favorite coffee mug or something. <laughs> Give it as a present to someone and they are printable vinyl. So, you know, if you want to print out, you know, you can probably incorporate something like this into something. You can print out text up there on your printer and your inkjet printer, things like that. You know, I'd leave more open space, you know, I wouldn't do it you know, with this you know, amount of area in there, but you can though, because it's, that's what the paper's made for. So keep that in mind. I guess if you're going to do that too, you know, you maybe print on there and then work the scene around it or something like that, or whatever you're going to be stamping on there. So, um, but it's pretty fun stuff. The printable vinyls do take just about any types of inks and it dries just fine. I, here's the dye based Marvy. There's the Brilliant Sink, here's a Stazon, and the Versafine Claire. Shockingly, Versafine Claire, an oil-based um, pigment ink, dried just fine. You can see that kind of rippling here, where that, it's coming out from the sticker. Uh, yeah, here's the sticker um, aspect of it, like that, so. It's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a great surface for us uh, card makers, you know having some kind of dynamic surface that pretty much seems to accept just about any type of ink that you want to add on there. It's just finding kind of an application that you want to use for it. But um, I don't know, I love it. And being able to color the colored pencils and that type of media on top of a metallic surface is just, you, you, you just can't do that with you know, the foils, card stocks, and the, the print, you know, the the vinyl, you know, the holographics of the past, but now the printable vinyls come along and it just really opens up the doors for whatever colors you want to use on there. So fun, dynamic stuff. And I don't know, but you guys, you may be like, hey, I already, you know, I didn't want to buy more, you know what I mean? Media and I get it too. But um, if you like a uh, kind of uh, interesting surfaces. And if there is one that you already want to, you want to throw in there, that's like completely different. Some of you already have it, but um, I don't know. You might want to think about a printable vinyl out there. There's not so many, there's not a ton of different types. You know, a lot of them seem to be the holographics, but they are pretty dynamic and you can do all kinds of different things with them. I think, you know, little gift tags and ornaments would be perfect for that uh, type of cardstock, or if you call it cardstock surfaces, you know, printer paper. So anyways, yeah. Thanks so much for uh, checking out the video, logging on, checking this out. Uh, hope everyone, as I as mentioned, are having a great holiday season. And I don't know, yeah, I'll have to think of another application for this composition right here. I want to, like I said, I want to keep getting um, simpler and simpler and simpler in terms of this general, you know, bridge in the, covered bridge in the forest type of scenario here. But like I said, I think this one would be pretty interesting with the, uh, maybe with that blue holographic that I just got, you know, can you imagine that blue kind of uh, northern lighty type of thing, you know, rising from the surface. I wouldn't do any coloring, so it'd, it'd be pretty, probably pretty fast. It's just a, a matter of uh, blocking all that area out with some white uh, pigment ink and just making the impressions and that's about it. I still would like to do this though in a mirror card, but it's not really appropriate for the mirror card because this area in here isn't water. <laughs> so we'll think of something. All right, kind of looks like like snow at one point. It does look like snow, huh, Shelly? Especially with that starry type of um, format in there. This scene right here, I mean, it would be more appropriate probably in a in a wintry type of scene, though. You know, um, with those stars up there, I think it would look really cool. I should do this like in a, just like a I don't know, whatever uh, 
winter terrain type of thing. I've, I've been wanting to use my wolves too. I love wolves, you know, at nighttime, you know, running through the snow, that type of imagery. So I've been wanting to do something like that, that maybe that would be good with the, uh, the vinyl. I mean, the, the blue holographic one, you know, kind of a wolves in the snow under some Northern lights type of uh, imagery. Okay, let's see. I would like for you to do one with stormy, rainy type of look with lightning too. Got it. Sounds good. I haven't used my lightning in a while. Uh, the the whole type of thing with um, rain though. That's one's uh, that one's tough. Because um, how do you really represent rain? You know what I mean. I don't know if Genie was on here. You know, Genie's good with all that type of like super like, you know, wisp. You know strokes of like weather pattern up in the sky doing it with like brush strokes and things like that it looks a little bit like or i don't know blizzard practically or something like that with the the motions that are going on like that but that could look like that and then when i splatter paint that tends to look more like snow so yeah but we can definitely do something with lightning for sure all right folks thanks again for joining in hope you enjoyed it have a great rest of evening or morning, daytime, if you're in Australia. <laughs> and hopefully we'll see you on the next uh, live stream.